Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One, coming to you on Sunday, July 11, 7 11. The year's 2021. Let's talk trading. Weekly open and gap. Before we get started, a reminder these videos are for educational purposes only. Your results may differ from mine. And I'll also remind you about risk management. Don't lose any more on any one single trade than you're willing to lose. Taking a look at the weekly, so far we haven't moved that much. Um, we've got one gap that hasn't filled. So the pound def they filled the gap. Wasn't much of a gap, but it filled it nonetheless. We're three pips above the weekly open at the moment and we're putting in the opening range for the week you can see we're 58 pips above the opening range for the month at the moment and we're 251 pips or 252 as i speak above the yearly open just to get some reference points So we're not going to have an inside bar today. Um, we had one one week ago on the uh, pound dollar. So since we had an inside bar one week ago, 38.97 trigger long, 37.41 trigger short off of the weekly inside bar from a week ago. Daily inside bar happened 24 days ago, but we're nowhere near that. And if you also notice, we are inside the high and low of the monthly inside bar. <clears throat> so this should be interesting what happens in this in this area here. For the day, one pair over. 100 pips the pound new zealand what i like to refer to as the new beast and we're six hours into the trading days at the moment pivot point is down at 38.46 so we looks like we opened down so we had a gap down so that means the pound had to go up which it did it filled that gap actually i'm thinking that might be the sunday no that's the that's the friday bar oh seven oh nine that's friday but we still haven't hit that pivot for today Rats, 28.8 range, no rat trades at the moment. Once again, showing the pivot, we've got the daily at 38.46, the weekly at 38.43. So we want to look for a short. Look for price to hit those pivots. Once again, we've missed, we haven't hit today's pivot yet, so let's see what happens. And here's a pivot we missed back in June. And here's the pivot we <clears throat> missed a love, uh, what? Let's see, July pivot, that's today. And this pivot here we missed back in February. So those are the missed pivots for this year so far. wick zone wasn't much of an upper wick zone uh so the, the red rats didn't get the feast i think we only closed about three pips off of the um high on friday so you can see where there's not much of an upper wick zone as far as the ranges we're just starting out And last week we had a, on Friday, there was a nice range. 
But if we're looking at the weekly, you can see the weekly. Let me touch the word on H1. Um, only in the 10 percent tile last week's range. So might want to look for the for a big week this week. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. And looking at the wall mall lines, you can see here we're only eight pips off of the double O, and we had a cross below it. So let's just see what happens. Um, I heard something. I was watching uh, 60 Minutes just uh, before I was making this video, and there was an author, and he said something about if he could just get the right combination of words, then he could communicate. So I was just thinking that I know some people are struggling out there, and I'm wondering maybe if I could just get the right combination of words to explain, maybe the light bulb would go off. Because what happens is, As time moves on, you get really familiar with something, and to you, it's obvious. So some of these things are very obvious to me, where others, you know, that there where I was, you know, a decade or two ago. But I try to impart things as simply as possible, and that's one of the reasons why I like to show horizontal lines. And yes, I do show some gauges, and I do talk about things like percentiles and frequency distributions and things of that nature. But And to me, it's simple, but that's only because I've been working with it. But some people struggle to get those concepts. And so I realize it's incumbent upon me to explain it in such a way that I can pass on what I know to the, those who are watching the video. Some people get what I say and some people don't. So I guess I have to work at my craft a little bit better. Because it's really easy for the teacher to you know, blame the student or denigrate the student. But you know, if the teacher is, is a good teacher, then they might understand that some people learn visually and some people learn, you know, um, auditorily, where they, they have to hear it a few times. And some people, you know, they're a hands-on or kinesthetic learner, they have to do it. And as I tell traders, it's like, yeah, you can, you know, watch the videos and do a bunch of stuff, but you don't learn trading until you actually trade. I mean, you can learn the theory, but you're not going to get good at it until you actually trade. And you actually have, have some skin in the game, even if it's only a penny or a dime a pip. I mean, you have to have that. But when you really learn to trade is when you get some money on the line where it really matters to you. Because if you're trading at a dime a pip and it doesn't matter to you, then, you know, you can you'll you might do some things that if you were trading, say, at $10 a pip, it that might matter to you, or $100 a pip. So in the beginning, you, you start out light, just like lifting weights. You want to get your form down. But sooner or later, you're going to come to that point where you're going to be trading real money, and the results of your trading is going to matter to you. And that's when you really learn to trade. That's when you, you bring it all together, your money management, your risk management, um, and things of that nature. So I want you to think about what I've just said. And if you have some questions, um, feel free to ask. And I'm not sure what we're going to do this week. It might just be a uh, in the moment, spur of the moment, 
whatever we feel like doing um, as opposed to like picking one topic and doing three four videos in a row on it and also if there's an indicator out there that I've written that you have a question about let me know um, I know some people you know they've they've asked me questions somebody was saying well the whole low do the uh, highest and lowest uh, for the M15 candles every four hours. It's just like, no, it won't. And that's not how it was written. And, uh, and that's not how it was designed. Because what I find interesting, and, um, and I don't mean to be discouraging, but how traders um, want to start monkeying with things um, or trying to improve things before they've mastered um, what they've been given and that's not to say that they can't but I just find it it's like how can you improve something that you really haven't learned and mastered that's <laughs> now I, I always find that funny you know it's kind of like the new kid comes in you know when there's a bunch of old veterans and he, he's they're trying to do something it's like kid you know you got to learn the ropes and that's kind of way it is in trading you you do have to learn the ropes but a lot of people they don't put the time in to learn the ropes they want that shortcut you know and I can understand it considering how you know once you put your name out there and you maybe click on a link to something then all of a sudden you get bombarded with all these emails from all these gurus out there and they're really good at what they're what they do meaning they're really good at separating um, people from their money by using the persuasion techniques of marketing and advertising and salesmanship um, they are really good at it and it's easy to get caught up in it. It's like they, they make these promises, but um, you, you just have to wonder. You know, some people, you know, say, well, you you put your indicators out there. You sell indicators. They're like, no, I don't sell indicators. I mean, I've written more indicators you can download for free. It's like, you know, I do the donationals, and that wasn't even my idea. Um, I got that from Airball. But, you know, and that was just to keep all the people who badmouth me from getting my code or at least making them, you know, buy me a steak dinner if they're going to want my code. And so that that's where that came from. But it's amazing how some of these uh, these people still persist um, in their beliefs. Even when pre presented with evidence and. Once again, it gets back to what I was saying about, you know, if you have the right combination of words, um, that's how you could get people to change, you know, their ideas and then change their behavior. Because it's not enough just to present people with the facts. It just doesn't work that way. And politicians are really good at that. They know how to tug at the heartstrings and push those emotional hot buttons to get you to, you know, vote this way or vote that way. But anyway, that's pretty much for the weekly uh, wrap up. You can see we got a three ball on the bottom, so might want to play a reversal here. It's... So by this time, you all know it's not what you trade. It's how you trade it. So go out there and drain the banks this week. This is a rumpled one. Over and out.